Patty is an agricultural economist and research leader of a global program called Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security, CCAF, and is based at the World Agroforestry Center in Nairobi. Her expertise includes poverty and livelihoods analysis, impact assessment, agricultural systems analysis, and innovative research approaches for linking knowledge with action. She has over 25 years of experience leading and managing multidisciplinary teams in the research sector across both Africa and Asia. Without further ado, over to you, Patty. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dahlia and Maria. And hello, everyone. I'm pretty excited to be here. I stopped counting at about 20 countries. So this is really neat to be uh, talking to you all. So as Dahlia said, I'm a research leader with a program called Climate Change, Agriculture, and Food Security, which we uh, call CCAPS for short. It's made up of um, 15 international agricultural research centers called the CGIAR. And we link to the global environmental change um, research community, which is many, many universities, kind of the best and brightest climate change and global environmental change scientists in the world, linking to people that are doing practical agricultural research for development on the ground. We work very closely with governments, national agricultural research systems, many NGOs, farmers organizations are key partners and private sector. And we, we, the program, I won't go into detail at all. I, I urge you to look at our website. But it's looking a lot at synergies and trade-offs between mitigation, adaptation, and food security. One of our um, key pathways to impact is through gender. And it's, uh, we envision sort of explicitly and better targeting women, youths, indigenous groups, etc to achieve the outcome stated here, the empowerment of women and marginalized groups through increased access to and control over productive assets, inputs, information, food, and markets, and strengthen participation in decision-making processes. And we see this as not, not only key for achieving gender-related outcomes, but also for our food security and poverty-related outcomes. So we're really trying to explicitly and more um, aggressively, if you will, uh, think about the gender issues. I lead the research theme called Linking Knowledge with Action. And what this really boils down to is how we do the research matters a lot. Climate smart agriculture, more than anything else, means transformative changes in agricultural practices. So we are actually embracing social learning approaches with many partners. And our goal here is to really spread change through networks, um, sort of past individuals, past small targeted activities in particular groups, and, and the whole scaling out challenge that it, it really is a very big challenge. So we're pursuing some innovative new approaches and strategies to ensure that new knowledge leads to actions to enhance food security. So we're looking uh, much more than we ever did before at communication and ICT-based um, partners and strategies. We're um, thinking much more and doing open access tools and data sharing. So the, some of the do tools um, that we're um, pointing you towards are now freely and readily available. And we're looking at innovative engagement and communication strategies. So one example is in, here in East Africa, we're working with a new farm reality show called Shamba Shepa. And it, it, it reaches millions of people now. And they're listening to this show. They're watching it for entertainment purposes. But we're linking it to um, the, the new um, science and, and practices that are being developed through research with partners and showing these uh, climate smart practices um, on the TV show. And people are watching it for entertainment purposes, but they're also learning uh, while they watch. And we're also looking at other things like mobile phone-based um, agricultural advisory services. We're looking at explicitly targeting climate and ag information services to women. We're, we're doing things with participatory farmer lab videos, so the women are making the videos also so they can share their adaptation strategies, et cetera. 
We're also testing things like new crowdsourcing approaches. Um, so that's going out to many, many people and um, testing uh, new varieties and then asking people to send in by text um, message what they think about these varieties so you can look at the characteristics that women are looking for, that younger people versus older people. Um, so that's kind of exciting new research too. And we're thinking a lot about these gender impact pathways and developing them explicitly with our partners um, that are working on the ground and thinking about the capacity issues that I think came up quite a bit in, in the first um, session of this webinar series. We're also improving, uh, looking at uh, new research methods. And again, in the first uh, session of this webinar, uh, Sybil Nelson talked about these uh, new participatory and, and more qualitative, if you were, uh, research approaches and training materials. Now these are particularly useful for diagnosing the issues and constraints facing different types of people and can be used to start to understand what particular uh, practices are in different places for women versus men or for older versus younger people, for example. We're also developing um, an intra-household survey tool that, that builds actually on the IFPRI's Women's Empowerment and Agriculture Index that again was raised in the first session of this series. Um, these are surveys where you actually ask a woman and a man within the same household the same questions uh, separately. This approach is, is particularly good for delving into differences in thinking and actions that help people deal with change, including a changing climate. Because, of course, these households and, and people are dealing with a lot of changes, not just um, climate change. And, for example, we're finding cases where climate smart agriculture increases women's workloads as the work involved falls on them, largely on them. And of course, their other workload isn't necessarily decreasing. For example, their work in the households. So for example, carrying water um, for zero um, grazing dairy cows, you know, it just enhances women's workload. Watering crops from harvesting uh, rainwater. So um, we're seeing quite a few examples now. Um, so it's, it's really um, important that we look at the labor demands of these technologies. So basically, um, we still have many research and evident um, gaps that we all need to tackle together. Um, it's going to require both qualitative and quantitative research approaches. The research questions should precede the choice of methods. That sounds obvious, but a lot of people um, go for the method first before thinking about really hard about what are the questions and can we answer this in a group based, group based approach or do we have to go to intra household which is time consuming, expensive, etc. And uh, what our program is doing to tackle this um, tough question, what are gender sensitive climate smart practices? Is we're doing some of the same um, surveys, both uh, qual and quant methods, across very diverse ag systems and regions in the world. And we're, we're getting some interesting results now. And we're going to be having a, a, probably a, a conference later in the year to start highlighting some of these findings. So stay tuned for that. Some initial findings, I just thought I'd give you a few mm -hmm. teasers. Um, we're finding that women are, are receiving significantly less information on agricultural practices and also on climate and weather. And this is holding across Africa and South Asia. We're also finding um, in instances where we've been bringing MET services, extension researchers and NGOs to gather around improved climate services and, and particularly working with women, that this can uh, lead to enhanced adaptive capacity and resilience. So we're starting to generate some of that badly needed evidence. Another uh, finding that was kind of interesting to me is in uh, two regions of Kenya, both East and, and Western Kenya, we found that there's still a very low awareness and significantly lower awareness of women than men of many um, natural resource enhancing sort of techno agricultural practices, um, you know, soil enhancing practices, for example. Um, so much lower awareness of women, but there is good news. Once aware, women uh, do appear to be just as likely or even more likely to adopt climate smart ag practices than men. 
And some of the examples of this that we're finding um, in East Africa are water harvesting for agricultural use, ag different agroforestry practices, crop residue mulching, composting, manure management. Uh, women, in particular, seem aware of, of uh, drought, heat, and flood tolerant varieties and, and starting to use them. They're starting to use minimum tillage and cover cropping, so conservation agricultural practices. But obviously, different practices are specific to different areas, so it's hard to generalize uh, um, too broadly. And we are seeing institutional and um, property rights issues, for example, market issues and constraints are still really restricting uptake of climate smart agriculture in many places. And I'd point you to some of IFPRI's um, resources on, on this because they've been doing some really interesting work on gender and assets for, uh, for women in agriculture, for example. And I'm just going to leave you um, with some links. Um, we've been doing a lot of blogs on our, our CCAF sites. And what I like about the blogs is that you can read about a topic. It's very nice and easy and fun. They're short articles. And if you want to delve into it more, you go to the links to the papers and to the tools and other resources. So I'm hoping that these uh, resources will be helpful to you and look forward to um, addressing some of the questions. I, I've already um, seen a lot of great questions coming up, so I, I hope we can um, help shed some light on some of them.